This huge mental health lie is something that you and pretty much everyone else in your life still believes. And if you could just come away from this video and start to let go of this lie and see the truth, then your life will change. Because that's exactly what happened to me like two years ago. So settle down, get yourself some popcorn or some pleasant beverage, and let's begin. When you're all sat at home and you start to feel a little bit hungry, or maybe very, very hungry, what's the first thing that you usually do? Most likely you go to the fridge or cupboard, you get yourself some food, you eat said food, and then you no longer feel hungry. Most people do not think that when they are hungry, they have no control over changing that state. So why do people often feel that they have very little control over their mental well-being? We feel as if we can go out and earn money by working. We feel as if we can learn things by, say, reading a book. We feel we can go and do a shit when we need to do one. But why do we not feel the same with our mental health? Why is the response of most people when they feel mentally in the bin to go, Oh, well, I can't control this, so... That's the lie that hurts millions of people. We are outsourcing our locus of control to external factors. My brain's just wired that way. My parents were horrible to me. I just broke up with someone. I'm lonely. That all may be very true. And it doesn't help you at all to lay the cause of your emotional pain on things you can't control. It means you are not to blame, yes, but it means that there's nothing you can do to change it. And what that does is it makes you powerless and helpless. But luckily there is a character trait that you can develop that dissolves this lie. However, to make you do that, we have to explore this topic with a little more depth, starting with this guy, William Glasser and his choice theory. William Glasser was an American psychiatrist who made the claim that human beings are in complete control of their behavior. And we act to fulfill five of our basic needs, making the choices that we think are best for us. Although this can often go wrong as people confuse what is actually best for them, making too many choices for momentary pleasure rather than what's better for the long-term trajectory of their lives. However, the fundamental point of the theory is that our life circumstances are a direct result of our actions and therefore we are personally responsible for them. And that can be a bloody hard pill to swallow. Like not only does your life feel shitty and unfulfilling, but now there's some head on YouTube telling you it's all your fault. But the truth is, Glasser's theory doesn't really take into account real things that affect us that we can't control, like, for example, childhood trauma. What I am saying is that although this theory isn't completely true, you will benefit significantly if you live as if that's the case. If you go out into your life with the belief that all of your decisions, large or small, mold the future of your existence and the quality of your mental state, then you will benefit, as hard as it may be. The main reason that you'll benefit from aligning your worldview to choice theory is that it will build your levels of agency. Agency is the essential character trait that I alluded to earlier. And my favourite definition of agency comes from George Mack's appearance on a very old episode of the Modern Wisdom podcast where he referenced Eric Weinstein's perspective. And I think this is like the most important personality trait. When I look at like friends who I know are going to do shit and friends who I know probably aren't going to do shit, um, it, high agency is by far like the single biggest factor. So the way Eric Weinstein talks about it is like, do you believe the story that's given to you? Like, so let's say, for example, I go, oh, Chris, you can't set up an events company. You're, you're 20 years old. OK, low agency people go, oh, right, OK, I'll just go and get a job X, Y, Z here. Whereas the high agency person is like, oh, fuck, fuck you, I'm going to like figure out a way of doing this. If you are told by somebody else that you feel bad mentally, be that a doctor diagnosing you or a family friend or maybe just the sensations of your brain and your emotions, do you have to listen to that story? No. And I must say, I'm not making the case to repress the ways that we feel and stiff the upper lip and keep calm and carry on. No, not that either. What I am saying is that you cannot keep believing the story that you feel bad mentally and that is just the way things are always going to be because that story is a fucking lie. You need to develop some agency, see the facts and think, there is something I can do about this. With agency, you can take back control of the ways that you think and act to promote more positive life experiences and reduce the amount of negative life experiences. On the 22nd of January 2022, I made a shit quality video on an awful camera about cognitive reframing. These were techniques that I used to change the way I think and I still use them to this day. 
When you feel bad, you can take a moment, you can pause, and you can stop yourself from entering the automatic pilot thought loops like, why me, and there's nothing I can do about this. In fact, you can train yourself to think, yes, this is shitty. Like, very, very shitty. But it's not forever. And something must have gone wrong in my actions or the way that I approach life making me feel this way. And this means that I can look at ways that I can improve things and make changes and ultimately learn from the experience. And that's not repressing or forcing yourself to be happy. That's just true. That's just questioning the story that you've been told. That's just developing a level of agency. That's just how you change the way you think and therefore the way that you feel. Alex Hormozzi talks about how you can make your suffering into your sermon. And I am absolutely in love with that idea. We are all going through constant battles and we are all going through our own version of suffering. But if you can develop a level of agency and overcome those things, then your suffering can become the heroic story of your life. You can use the ways that you took responsibility to improve your life when you felt shitty and try and help people improve their shitty situations, right? Having an overall positive impact on the world. Hence, I'm here on your screen right now. So the next time that you feel like shit and your brain is hungry for positive life experience, you can get off your ass and go to the fridge. You can see what actions you can personally take to make you feel better no matter how small. However, you might not know of the concrete, actionable steps that you can take to improve your mental health, and that's completely normal. Luckily, I put together this video which explains the actionable path I took to improve my mental health, and I worked pretty hard on it. So, I'll see you guys over there.